victory. Revelation 12, 11. Here we go. This is quite the verse here. Okay? You ready? And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do justice to it, but here we go. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. And because the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. Now let's talk about the end times. But the thing I want to bring out there is the blood of the Lamb, yeah, okay, that's an established thing. That's something that Jesus has done. But that line that says the word of their testimony, there's something there. There's something there that, that I think we need to, um, it's almost like a secret weapon. It, it may even be a missing ingredient. And um, whenever you hear that term, word of their testimony, man, you know, I know how faith has been abused. And people have, like, people in the name of Jesus have, have preached things about faith that are not biblical and out of balance. But that doesn't change the fact that this is the word of God here. There's something here that, that we need to show, okay? And if this verse shows anything, it's illustrating victory, okay? Him is the devil here. The old king, him, that's the devil. And I'm, you got to trust me, you can look at Revelation 12, you'll see the context of the verse, okay? And they're talking about their defeat over evil, and there is there's victory because of the blood of the Lamb, not only now, but in this future, where we got kind of like a TV screen of what's going to happen in the future, and God is showing John, okay, and he's writing, writing and recording it, not only is the victory, and John saw the victory of the blood. With all of the miracles and all the, the birth of the church, he got to see it more than any other disciple because he lived longer than him, okay? So he saw it in his time, but he's writing to us, it's now and it's forever. That's what Jesus has done. But the minor victories and the ups and downs between John writing this and right now, which is yeah, 1970 years about, okay? It's because the word of the testimony hasn't always been there. The power of the blood is more, it's greater than, it's, it's as great as it's ever been. It's now forevermore. But this, this thing here about the word of the testimony, we've got to get a handle on that. Start me up. I can't believe these guys. They're in their 80s, man. And I watch Mick Jagger dance on the stage, and I get I get sore just looking at this guy. Okay? <laughs> John, why you got a bunch of reprobates on, on, on you know, the slideshow here? Because we're talking about the Word of God. Well, i got to confess. There are some tunes I like by these guys, okay? Like, and, and you don't have to preach to me about how messed up their lives are. And I don't have to preach to you about how messed up some of the greatest classical composers that everybody thinks are wonderful. I don't have to tell you how messed up their lives were, okay? Just be, you know what, and, and, and anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, okay? You ever heard their song, Winning Ugly? And we're winning. Here's, here's the lyrics, just some of them that I can read. <laughs> okay. Back in the dressing room, the other side is a screaming, and we're winning, winning ugly. I remember when that song came out for the next 20 years, because I'm a big sports guy. You know, like football documentaries, baseball documentaries, and you know, they would show these guys, we'd talk to their families, and, show, and they're playing this too in the background. I mean, there are all sorts of championship teams that would play this in the dressing room during the playoffs. Winning ugly, winning ugly. What does that mean? That means you're doing anything you need to win. Okay? I was brought up to cheat. As long as the other side wasn't looking. Now, we don't agree with that, I know. Okay? So why am I telling you about it? Jesus won ugly. Jesus took on the worst. Jesus suffered and died a horrible, gory, torturous death. So I don't have to win ugly. So I can be pure. And these guys know all about sin. That's fine. My Jesus dealt with all that. <coughs> and I'm not under that. I actually pray for these guys, you know. Crazy thing. A guy like Mick Jagger, 80 years old, that's committed just about every single book. 
And Ken was thankful for the fact that if Judas showed up at the cross while Jesus was there and asked forgiveness, he would have been forgiveness, forgiven. If Mick Jagger shows up at the cross before he dies, crazy as it sounds, and it's not fair. You're right, it's not fair. You know? I can stand back and go, hey, just a second. I was brought to pastor's home. I've lived for Jesus all my life, man. You know what? And Jesus would say to me, John, boy, you ever sound like the older brother in the story of the prodigal son? Smart the heck out. Okay? And that's what I hear with guys like Evil Knievel, Steve McQueen, <coughs> and Mickey Mantle. There's three examples right there of hellraisers, drinkers, womenizers, guys that committed every sin of the book. Every one of them came to Jesus in the last six months of their life. And with men of God leading them, and, and I've seen all their testimonies, man, I have bawled. I have bawled because I am so thankful for a God who is it fair. It's not fair. It's not fair that I should have all these things forgiven. It's not fair. Okay? But Jesus went ugly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And do you see what's happening here? I'm giving you a bit of my testimony. What's going on here in this message right now? we got the power of the blood. That's great. I'm glad he did it. But I'm giving you the word of my testimony. And when we share the word of our testimony, and we start understanding what Jesus has really done, people who have never heard that, it's not old hat to them yet. Pow! It hits them. And the convicting power of the Holy Spirit touches people and lives are changed. It's the devil that keeps telling you, your story is boring. <laughs> Al started off at story time like they all do. Well, I'm just a guy. Well, I did this and did that. By the time he's done, and he went overtime too. He smoked up for a long time. You know, I forgot to tell him, don't go longer than 30 minutes. If you go longer than 30 minutes, the Holy Spirit goes out the door. You know? And, and, and you know, God, I've told you some of that. Well, I didn't tell him that. By the time he got to about 40, 45 minutes, we were there on the end of our seats, man. Some of us were tearing up. And this guy who said, I'm just a regular guy, the devil tells you that all the time because he knows the victory of the blood. And if you ever start talking, sharing the word of your testimony, you're going to see things that you didn't think were going to happen. Okay? That's the word of our testimony. The devil knows how powerful it is, and he's got everybody convinced, well, your salvation's not that special. Every single one of our salvations has got the power to transform lives. And we've got to start believing what he says about it. Instead of those believable lies that keep being perpetuated in our, in our minds. Jesus won. Jesus won. He took on the ugly victory. Now, forever. Okay? The devil's always called the accuser. Okay? And the word Greek, the Greek word for devil literally means accuser. Now I don't have the scriptures here, but you can look them up later if you want to refer to them. In Job 1, we see Satan coming before God and he's accusing. That's what he does. You know? Have you seen my my servant Job? You know? It's one of my favorites. Oh yeah? Well, let me do this, do this, 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 you know. And I'm sure he was speaking through his wife when his wife said, curse God and die. In Zechariah 3, you can look it up, 1 to 2, it's not on the screen. But the devil there is shown, accusing again. Okay? In Luke 10 and 10, Jesus says, I saw Satan cast down. Now, a lot of people have added to that, and there's all sorts of crazy interpretations of it. But the context of it is, the 72 that he sent out with authority and power, they come back and they're just, their eyes are, they're, they're glowing. They're saying, even the demons are subject to us. They see miracles. And in his response is, yeah, I saw the devil cast down. In other words, with what you were doing, I saw the devil defeated. That's the context of it. People want to add multi-layers of interpretation. That's their business. But the primary interpretation is, yeah, I saw the kingdom of Satan shaken when you went out and did what I told you to do. Now, there's quite the drama that goes on here. And I, I don't think, did I put this up? No, I'm not. I'm just going gonna, gonna to get you the cool slide here. Um, so, Revelation 12, it's story time. Let's think of this as story time, okay? You're going to trust God that as I read the scriptures here, you're going to kind of get a taste of this victory of the blood now and forever. 
and there was war in the heaven. Some of you parents, you need to read these to your kids when you don't want to go to bed at night. You're not scared about dying. Maybe they'll crawl in bed and be scared to death after this. But then it's story time, okay? Kind of take this like I'm telling you a story. And there was war in the heaven. Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon is in the, his angels waging war. And they were not strong enough. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. The serpent of old, who is called devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was thrown down to earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. And he accuses them, and who and he who accuses them before our God day and night. Get the story, what's going on? Okay, what's been going on? And they overcame him, here's our scripture there, and they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. Whoa. For this reason, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has, look at this, has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Okay? This is what's happened at the cross of the resurrection. Okay? He had some type of authority before then, not anymore. But he's been cast down. And, and you know, I don't have a lot of patience for people that have the interpretations all figured out. Okay? I don't know. That's just me. Maybe you need to pray for me a little bit more. I like to just stick to what the Word says and let the Holy Spirit talk to us about what's going on. Because there's always truth there. There's always stuff that will build us up. He's been thrown down. Okay? And it says in the translation, having great wrath. In some translations, okay, he's, he's been stripped of his power and he's come down with great fury. Really ticked off. Okay? He's mad. And his end, remember victory now and forevermore, his end has been determined because of the blood, but not every servant of Christ knows that kind of authority over him. And they haven't learned how to use the word of their testimony because he will squat on territory that is not his, that he has no legal right to. And he is determined to mess up your life. Okay? Is great and has no weapons. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. I guess the lies are not considered real weapons. And the Lord in His Word wants to expose them for what He has. He has no weapons. But Ephesians 6 talks about these darts. We've got the shield of faith. <coughs> what are the darts? They're lies. He's as good a liar as ever been. And what's the shield of faith? Faith. That's the word. That's the word of our testimony. Uh-uh. And somehow we've got to employ that. Somehow we've got to spur one another up. And I don't mean to be a pain in the neck where we're always you know, accusing and giving somebody a hard time when they don't have enough faith. Man, a lot. There's been all sorts of spiritual abuse that's taking place in that realm. But it's clear in the Word that this Word of Testament is connected with the power of blood. Very strongly, okay? John, now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Happened at the cross. Okay? Happened at the resurrection. And I, and if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. He's talking about what's going to happen, and it's happened. Okay? Satan, before the cross, and before the resurrection, he had real authority. Okay? Because the blood of Christ had not been shed, and it had not conquered all of sin. In fact, 1 Corinthians 2 says the authorities of this dark world, if they had known what was going to happen, where they'd be stripped of all authority and sin paid for it, they would not have crucified the King of Kings. Okay? The Lord was always a few steps ahead of them. In fact, why, that's why the devil tempts Jesus in the wilderness. He's fishing for information. You know? Throw yourself down, you know? <laughs> Because they'll say, hey, eat this bread, worship me, all this other stuff. He's trying to figure out what's going on here, you know, how this whole plan's going to work out. He had real authority because he had real authority before the cross. Because remember, God's original plan was to birth a family and use a nation. 
but he couldn't violate their will. Okay? And because man had chosen disobedience, it gave Satan room to work. Okay? It gave him it gave him even more authority. And God, through Christ, he recognized that authority. He recognized the authority of Satan until it was legally stripped away. And it was legally, for all of the court of heaven, it was legally, by the power of God, it was stripped away with the blood of Christ. It's the only thing that could do it. And I don't think the demonic or the or the or the even people that lived before the resurrection and the and, and, and the, the cross, I don't think they could even imagine that God was going to pull that off. I don't think that there's how's he gonna do it? You know, we keep doing these sacrifices, okay, life's in the blood, and you know we got the relationship with God, but they're talking about Messiah. Nobody had it quite figured out. They knew something was gonna change, something was gonna happen. And those who had an open heart, those who, you know, hungered and thirst for righteousness, not the ones that you know thought they were good, they could see it when Jesus started talking. That's it. That's it. That's the whole Old Testament. That's everything coming together there. And they, surely this must be the Son of God. Even a Roman centurion said that. <coughs> After Jesus dies. That's the power of the blood there. And, and, and there was spiritual blindness there, except to those that could see it. Okay? Satan conquered. Satan conquered man's flesh by seducing him with power. Seducing him with knowledge, seducing him with pride and lies, and not only in the Garden of Eden, okay, but during the flood, when that guy's crazy, what does he know? He's in the minority. If it was true, would we only just him doing it? And then in the Tower of Babel, okay, we're gonna make a name for ourselves. We don't need God. It's the devil seducing them. You're gonna be great. You're gonna be powerful. And God brings judgment because their sin hasn't been paid for yet. Okay? Satan's influence, his power, totally, you got to get this, totally canceled by perfect, sinless flesh. Paying the price for man's disobedience and then, and thus, conquering sin, death, and all evil. All of it. Dead. Gone. But there's a couple scriptures. Hosea 4 and 6 is one of them. Or is it 6 and 4? It's 4 and 6. It's 4 and 6. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Now that's an Old Testament scripture, but it repeats itself in other scriptures in the New Testament as well. Where people don't realize the authority of Jesus Christ. And the devil is so good at lying that some people walk around, even Christians, they're kind of like zombies, you know? They're doing their best, but they haven't come to grips. You know, that's why... Jesus says, you know, in his word, says a man ought to examine himself. It's not only that, you need to examine. But it's not, and we say, right, it's not what you can do, it's what he's done. And if I can ever get a grip on what he's done, it's going to make all the world a difference to what he, he wants to do. Jesus is tempted. Notice he's tempted after it was publicly acknowledged that he was the Son of God. The first time it's acknowledged he's the Son of God is at baptism. Okay? This is my son who I'm well pleased. You're the son of God. You need to baptize me. That's when the word got up. Uh oh. Uh oh. And Satan attempts him, says, like, no, no, you side demons, forget it, man. I know the word of God better than you do. I need to I need to try to bring this guy down. I need to see if it's really true. You know? Because maybe, you know, we can we can tempt him. Maybe we can poison him somehow. Okay? And at that time he's tempted, he's still under the law, the devil. The devil had the power. Some people say he was just lying. No, but he had the power to offer him all that power. And that power was nullified by Christ's shed blood. The devil didn't even see it coming. Only sinless blood could meet God's justice and cancel Satan's authority. He stepped into a power vacuum. He wouldn't have had the power if it wasn't for man's disobedience, because sin started going, okay? And he had room to operate because of that. Revelation 12, 11. There it is. Again. Overcome. Overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to get back up a little bit. Here we go. We want that victory. We want that victory. 
Michael wins in Revelation 12, okay? He says, cast down out of heaven. He, he wins that battle. Now contrast that with Daniel 10, 13, where it's the same Michael. And he's battling the prince of Persia, which is the demonic entity ruling over Persia. And he's three weeks battling him. Totally different. Why? Because the devil had way more authority back in Daniel. Okay? And the angels had to send reinforcements for that spiritual battle that was taking place while Daniel was fasting and praying and doing his thing here. Okay? Here's Daniel 10, 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding me for 21 days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me. For I had been left there with the kings of Persia. So victory there, but now it's victory. Now it's established forever. There's no more battles. The battle's been fought, okay? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now we go to Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. I, I'm sure you're thinking, and that comes to mind, that one scripture, if you lose your life, you'll save it. If you save your life, you'll lose it. That's what Jesus was talking about there. Okay? Man, that scripture must have gave more strength and more motivation and more power and more faith in the first couple of centuries than just about any. You kind of look at each other when you're facing, you know, persecution and death. They say, well, he warned us about this, didn't he? And they didn't just put it on. It was alive. It's not like they flipped the coin. What are we going to do? Uh-uh. The decision was already made. I, there's a line I use at funerals. I love this. Nobody ever went to heaven whose heart wasn't already there first. Okay? When you come to Christ, you're not waiting to go to heaven. Heaven's already started. Okay? It's already started. And we have a, we have a, we have a squatters. We have lives. We have a kingdom that is defeated. And he's furious with us because he knows he's defeated. He only has a short time. And if we can learn this word of the testimony thing, if we can get the balance and get the real power of it, love their life. They couldn't be tempted by his lies because they didn't love their life anyway. That's a power of blood right there. Okay? Now, some of you already learned this, but I'm going to put it up there anyway. No victory without conflict. Okay? No, but now he's got the victory. Okay? But we, have, we are getting through this life. We are learning how to implement the victory of God over whatever comes our way. Some of us, some of you, have learned to do it better than others, okay? We know the peace and the power of God. We've seen Him. We've seen Him flow through us in, in, in ways that are, 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 you know, Romans 12, uh, Revelation 12, 12. Woe to the earth and sea, because the devil's come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he only has a short time. Great wrath, filled with fury. And that's why we, we're very familiar, and I hope you are, and if you're not, let's change it and make it so. I hope you're familiar with Ephesians 6, 10, and 18. Ephesians 6, 10, and 18, that's a spiritual warfare chapter, okay? Kind of sizes up what we're going against. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. You know, it, it's not necessary to be, you want to work out and do all that stuff, that's fine. You're probably going to live longer and you do a lot more, you know, for the kingdom of God alive than dead. But there is a scripture that says bodily exercise, you know, profit of little. Okay? And I'm not against exercise. I need it, okay? In fact, uh, my dad took that to the extreme. That scripture probably died 10 years earlier than he should have. Okay? Only one thing is necessary. Okay? Be strong in the Lord. And in His mighty power. Please, now you got to take care of the temple. That's the bottom. Okay? I'm not preaching heresy here. I just, some people, you know, they spend more time in front of the mirror than they do in the Word of God. That's, that's a problem. Okay? You're not going to evict any squatters squatting on your family's territory if you spend more time in front of a computer screen than in the work. Okay? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on. Okay? Listen to the Lord. Our faith, our victory, is realized by faith in the blood. Now, that's a different line, isn't it? There has to be an understanding in our lives. And you know, it's not a bad thing. Ask God, show me what this is all about. Make it real in my life. Okay? I need to know the authority of the blood of Christ in my life. Look at 1 John. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Now he can't say that unless the blood of Christ has done it. But the blood of Christ has made our faith <coughs> the implementer of the power of the blood of Christ. Okay? Okay? 
Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. The faith in it again. He wants us to believe John 16, 33. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I'm still praying how to do that. The Word of God's way more powerful than my opinion. Way more. Thank God's more powerful than my lack of understanding. Okay? His authority, His authority over our family, His authority is stripped. It's stripped literally by our faith. And the opposite is true. He wins when we doubt. He wins when we get afraid. He wins when we start, you know, believing the lies that are against what the Word of God says. When you know the Word of God says something and it's clear, there are some things we don't know. Like the Word doesn't tell you, you know, who you're supposed to marry. The Word doesn't tell you, you know, where you're supposed to invest your money. There's principles there, okay? But, I'll give you an example. The best example is when we pray for the lost. He is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's clearly His will. So we don't ask God to save ben Nancy. We claim her for the kingdom of God because we know what the Word of God says there, okay? And when you know the Word of God stands firm on something, it goes beyond, oh God, you know, some people pray like they roll the dice and, oh, whatever happens, happens, you know, okay, sarah, sarah. Don't bring that nonsense New Age garbage into the kingdom of God, okay? That doesn't line up with Scripture, okay? The power of the blood is implemented by our faith. So there needs to be in my life, there needs to be in your life, a victorious vantage point, a victorious perspective. <coughs> it doesn't mean you're disconnected from the facts. <coughs> okay? Do you realize what the real facts are, the deeper facts are? And we maintain that victory by faith and not just belief, just, you know, this is deeper than just I mean, some people of faith, you know, they, they think it's mental gymnastics. <coughs> I believe, 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 you know. Quote your scripture during the way that kind of think Jesus is like a genie, you know? Rub the water, get your free wishes, you know. Say the right words. And you know, I, I, I don't thank you, I didn't thank you. She's she wonderful. You are wonderful, Mary. She's such a sister. Mm. Love you, sis. Um you know, uh, and it's kind of cute, because people that don't know Christ and haven't grown in Jesus, you know, often they'll say, as we do some church, like, yeah, could you say some special prayers? You ever heard that line? Say some special prayers for my sister, whatever. It, it's like, you know, there's certain kind of prayers, all these are the doozies, boy. We only pull these up when we're in real trouble. You know? Come on. And I know where they get it. I, want, I don't want to accuse the religious denominations that present prayer like that. There's too many of them. But don't bring that religious nonsense into your relationship with the Lord. Okay? We pour out our hearts to God. Okay? And we pour out our hearts to God because we believe. And, and somehow we've got to go from God make it right. He has already made it right. And, and, and I've, got to, I've got to pray. We've got to pray from a vantage point of victory. I'm still learning how to do that. And what motivates What keeps me away from it. Is all the crazy faith nonsense that's that's actually perverted scripture. But what keeps me going back to it wanting to understand, it's in the word. You can't fault what's in the word. Just because somebody's messed it up and interpreted it wrong, it's still the Bible. It's still more authoritative than, than anything I could say in my best messages. Now, some of you, maybe more than we want to admit, but I can't fight him, the devil. I can't fight sin. It's too great. Okay? Listen to me. And I'm not, this is not a rebuke. That is a lie. Because he's already defeated. He's already defeated. The victory somehow needs to be implemented into my mind. So I'm not thinking like that. Okay? Now Romans 8 has got a ton of great stuff in here. That's why we did 29 messages on it. Okay? So I want to go back to one of those scriptures that we looked at with Romans 8. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly, we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. Look at the wording there. There's no doubt. Now what does that look like? How, I, you know, I can't really tell you exactly how that looks at. I think I've seen it a bit in my own life, in other people's lives. But you know what? I don't want your faith or my faith to be limited by my experience and what I know. I need more than that. Well, where do you go for that? The Word. The 
unsearchable riches of God's word. Okay? But in all these things, what's all these things? Temptations, lies, we struggle against sin. You know, God, the Satan doing things that we don't like him to do. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through who and him who loved us. That's the blood right there. He has shed his blood and canceled everything that was against us. I remember a hymn that we used to sing, and he, he canceled everything that was against us, and he nailed it to the cross. It's not just mind over matter, you know, like mental gymnastics here. It's a truth in God's word that I need the Holy Spirit to implement, okay? Our victory is realized by submission to what the blood has done. Now, that's quite a line there. Our victory is realized. It's crazy, you know. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, we don't fight like the world does. Okay, it is like it's, it's a stumbling block to the Jews. It is madness to the Gentile. But to us, it is the power of salvation. This crazy tactic. How do we win? How do we implement victory? It's, it's in the flesh. It's the craziest thing in the world. Okay? We win through submission. Okay, give up. What? Sorry. That's why Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, I could have called the legion of angels. Can you imagine? The greatest act of victory. The greatest act of victory ever in the history of mankind is a guy lying down and him nailing him to a tree and torturing him. A guy who could have them all dead by a blink of an eye. <coughs> That's a pattern. That's a pattern. Our victory is realized by submission to what the blood has done. Well, what does that mean? Maybe I can simplify it. Submission to Christ. Submission to Christ. Okay? Let me give you an illustration. Now look at this guy. Got a Navy SEALs t-shirt on. I'm willing to bet that he's not a real Navy SEAL. <laughs> he's about as in good shape as I am. Okay? And I look at that Navy SEAL, and you don't know right away. Okay? Now I've seen Navy SEALs, you know, interviewed. On, on TV, and I've seen, you know, guys that really, and oh my goodness, I don't even want to talk about the training they want to win. It scares me to death. Are you kidding me? You've got to be, you got to be some, either you are filled with something that I don't have, or those guys are, just to survive the training. you got to be kidding me. They push them all, almost to the point of death. Okay. And I look at this guy, and I, well, I, yeah, he's probably, he wants people to think that he likes the Navy SEALs, okay? I think a lot of Christians are like that. They wear the t-shirt. But you can tell just by looking at him, yeah, right, you know? How can you tell the real servants of Christ? They've earned it. I thought salvation is free. Yeah, salvation is free. God will save anybody. But if you're going to implement the victory of the blood of Christ over the devil while you're on this planet, you're going to have some battles. Okay? That's why Jesus said, be a good cheer. You're going to have trouble. You know? If they hated me, they're going to hate you. <laughs> Wonderful. What am I getting into? You know? And you start realizing, the deeper you go into your relationship with Christ, you realize, he's beyond Navy SEALs, man. He's my hero, boy. He is my prototype. He is my, he, he is, he's my everything. Everything. And it's not just wearing a t-shirt and me admiring him. It, here's the crazy part. The Bible says that that spirit, if that spirit raised Christ from the dead, if it dwells in me, it's going to quicken this out of shape body. That gets miserable. That wants to think negative. Then somehow I think, you know what? Maybe I do have something that I can do for Jesus because the devil will not leave me alone. Okay? Do you have conversations with the devil? I do. I do. Maybe some of you aren't ready for that, but and I don't mean to get cocky because I'm hoping this will you know help you. I remember one of the most distinct uh, um, conversations I've ever had with the devil. I was chopping wood in Manitoba, okay? He used to heat my wood, so I'm chopping wood all the time. That's a manly thing to do, you don't talk. <laughs> keeps you in shape. And I felt, I was having, you know, I've told you guys I've had a lot of issues with blood poisoning, okay? And I can feel in my foot while I'm chopping chop when something's going on there, okay? I can feel something coming. And if it is something coming, I'm on antibiotics, and if you don't put the antibiotics, you die. It will kill you, okay? I've had 55 attacks of it. I know how to handle it. I know it better than the doctors do. 
Okay? Done a ton of research and I know what's going on. So I feel what's going on and I know what it is. I'm chopping wood and I start talking to the devil. Is that all you've got? You think you're going to stop me by giving me another blood poison attack? Man, I'm alive. You can do better than that. What is your problem? Okay? And I'm not slandering celestial beings, which is a very, very, you know, uh, you know, you don't want to go over the line here. But while I'm doing that, I'm also thanking Jesus. Thank Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Even before I even understood. That's 30 years ago. I know way more about the blood now. Lord, thank you for your blood. Thank you that you are I'm healed because of you. Thank you that no matter what happens, it's not my life, Lord. And I don't want it to be my life. I want it to be your life. And so we need to have that attitude towards him. How dare you come involved in my family? How dare you mess people up? You know? Why can you pray like that? Because it's a, it's a, it, you can't, I don't think you can pray like that unless there's a submission to God in your life. Because there's something happens through submission. You know? I think it's got something to do, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll save it. And I think only the Lord knows when it happens in our lives. And, and you know, it's got to keep rehappening because you want to walk with the Lord. As soon as you've learned something of Jesus, he's got another plan against you, you know. He's always got something ready to throw you off course and to tick you off. Anything that you will not realize the power of the blood of Christ. Anything to, to get you away from the fact that you're working from a vantage point of victory. Jesus earned the victory. He earned the victory. And we come under his authority by submitting to what he's done. You have to earn it. You have to earn it. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Well, here's the good news. Mary's doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Martha's doing all kinds of stuff. And all Mary's doing is sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's all she's doing. And Jesus says, Martha is worried of many things. Mary has chosen what was better, and it will not be taken away from her. What does that mean, it won't be taken away from her? There's going to come a time when she's in conflict. There's going to come a time when she's in a spiritual battle, and it will not be taken away from her. The authority and the vantage point of victory will be there. No, I will not accept this. This is not of God. I will walk in victory, okay? Now, I can't, it's, look, it's easy for me to preach this, okay? Okay? And some of you, you know, you've heard, I've tried that. Look, at, we've all tried that. Okay? It's not a case of trying. I find, I find the greater my submission to God, the greater my submission to God and submission to His power and literally laying down my life for the sake of the lost, for the sake of my family, for the sake of God flowing through me, less of John counsel and more of the Lord. I, in my opinion, I think that's the only thing that unleashes that type of faith. Is submission to the power of the blood in my life. Okay? And letting that power flow. Because I don't think it flows through any other way. If you want to be in charge, you're short-circuiting the power of God. Okay? I'm trying to teach you that. Because <laughs> I'm saving you a lot of grief and misery. Quit. There's a way that seems right to a man, and it leads to death. And everybody thinks, well, yeah, that disappears when you, when you get saved. There's a way that seems right to a man at least to death. And you're going to keep wanting to go that way even if you're washed by the blood of Christ. Because the devil wants you to have your own way. Because that's how he lied. That's how this whole thing got started. Your eyes will be open. You'll be like God. Come on. You want to have your own way. And it disguises itself as freedom. Okay? And all it is is bondage to self. And bondage to our enemy. Sitting at his feet. Okay, um, let me see. It's 421. It's October the 1st. Tomorrow at 421, October the 2nd, between now and then, it's going to be 24 hours. Okay? In that 24 hours, where will Jesus have you? When does Jesus get you in the next 24 hours? Okay? Where are you going to submit to him? Well, how do you do that? I've been doing it for 50 years. I'm still learning how. The only way I've ever learned anything is by doing it. I remember when I first got started, standing, you know, sitting in a prayer room and, and kind of going a little, 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 little bit for about an hour. Maybe that's why he said, you're going to find me when you seek me with all your heart. Okay? You don't have to seek it with all your heart to be saved by grace. Okay? All you need is whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. 
If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, He will come into you. But you know what? Christ Church is not in the business of just saving souls. We've got something up our sleeve that's way more important. Our Lord said, make disciples. Disciples are hardcore there. <laughs> disciples aren't afraid of anything. Disciples aren't perfect. I can show you the Bible. Oh my goodness. I don't even know if I want them as my friends. But it seems as though disciples have submitted to the King of Kings. And they've learned how to do that. Close your eyes. Jesus, I fear, Lord, that I'm communicating a lot of platitudes here. It sounds like pie in the sky. But God, it's your word. And Lord, honestly, God, I try to be as faithful to your word as possible. And Lord, I would not even attempt to get up here and talk like I have if I didn't believe, Lord God, that your word is powerful, even beyond what we can understand. And Lord, there's also the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to make it real. And this is, Lord, the power of your blood over sin and death is the most powerful force we have in the universe, God. It's as great as creation itself. And Lord, your mighty warriors, God, we got to learn how to implement it. we got to know how to walk in it, Lord God. And Lord, I feel led, Lord God, and I know I've got the agreement of my brothers and sisters, Lord, right now, Lord God, that, that wrestle with you and know your ways. God, right now, we're agreeing, right now, Lord God, to, to rebuke. Lord, would you rebuke every spirit of condemnation that's in this place? Yes. Every spirit, Lord God, makes people think they don't measure up. Yes. It's not about them, God. It's not what they can do. It's what you've done. And Lord, I pray. I know that people talk about mental illness, but Lord, there's one good, healthy obsession we can have, and that's an obsession with the power of the blood of you, God, Jesus Christ. And, and show, us how to, show us how to do this, God. Show us how to use the word of our testimony, God, of what you have done in our lives. Show us how to do it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Nobody look around, okay? I'm not going to call you forward. I'm giving you an opportunity here. Okay? Not going to embarrass you. There's nobody looking around. If you're looking around, I can't promise people will not be embarrassed because that's your fault. Not mine. Okay? I ask people to close their eyes because I don't want to be embarrassed. Okay? How many here would, would, would say to me this afternoon, John, I want to know how to do that. I want to know how to use the word of my testimony to implement the incredible power of the blood of Jesus Christ what he's done in my life. I want that in my life. Well, you want to know something? Put your hands down. I didn't have to, I even asked people to raise their hands. People raise their hand right away. I would suggest that the Lord's got a lot of good fertile soil to do some great stuff here. I really believe that. And I'm not, I do not, I'm not the type of guy to encourage people just to, because they need encouragement. I know that's a good thing, but that's a fault of mine. You know, i got to get better at that. So I'm saying that because I believe with all my heart. Who wants to say? Anybody want to say? Okay, I'm going to, let's stand. Okay, you ready? This is going to be fun. I'm going to hammer you today. I got, you, you're not doing one fun song. You're doing three. Okay. You're doing three. Now, the good news is, most of them are pretty short. Okay? If you know them real loud, if you don't, just kind of look at the person next to you and say, what kind of church have I gotten into? Okay? Here we go. Some of you might know these. Okay, here we go. Where is it here? Oh, yeah, this is when it doesn't matter. You know, here we go. Hallelujah, what a thought, Jesus, full salvation, brought victory, victory, let the power of sin assail, heaven's grace can never fail, victory, 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 yes, victory, hallelujah, I am free, Jesus gives me victory, glory, glory, hallelujah, he is all in all me, to the first day, she said, that oh, wasn't too bad, okay. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Anybody here get plunged by Jesus? I'm just 
forget this bit. I remember when I was a kid and I was saying this. I saw, I had this mental image of Jesus coming up to me with a plunger. You know what I mean? Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. One more time. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. See how I tie it to you together? The victory of the blood of the cross, it's implemented through faith. It's just, a, it's just a theological concept unless, you know, hey man, I believe this. And, and, and that's all in the Word. Okay? Give us understanding, Lord. And, and give us, God, motivated and empower us, Lord God, to, to encourage each other and to cheer each other on, God, as we see the day approaching. Amen. Amen. Okay? Go out there and turn the world inside. I'm sorry. Go out there scared of that after that. Yesterday. What'd you get? Uh, nine Corvettes. Oh, you, you found that you found that the, that set, eh? With the convertibles and everything. There's a whole set of Corvettes. Because there's a whole set of uh, 